Hey viewers, it's Tammy T2009, and I'm here with another Thomas and Friends review. Now, I hope you all enjoyed my Season 7 review. I know I enjoyed making it, since Season 7 is my favorite season of all time. But now we're going to be talking about Thomas's turning point. Yes, that's right. You know what they say, all good things must come to an end. Well, that is almost the case with Thomas and Friends. There was some point where Thomas Friends was good again. But for now, we're going to be talking about what happened in 2004. After Season 7 ended. So, in 2003, that was the last year that Ghislaine Thomas had owned Thomas the Tank Engine. And then in 2004, Hit Entertainment took full control of Thomas and Friends. So, Hit Entertainment had the full rights to own Thomas and Friends, and the show was handled under their care. And how did that turn out? Well, this era is called the Hit Era of Thomas and Friends. Before I start this, I want to say that when I first talked about the Hit Era, I accidentally called it the Sharon Miller Era. And if you... Um, have never heard of Thomas and Friends. The hit era is basically seasons 8 through 12. And then the Sharon Miller era began in 2009 and ended in 2012. So the Sharon Miller era, aka the Nitrogen era, was the CGI era of Thomas and Friends. That was the beginning of the desecration to my childhood. But this isn't even more... It, but this was still another desecration to my childhood as well. And if you're wondering why I'm calling it a desecration to my childhood, well, because there are a lot of problems that I do have with season eight. Like, this was the very start of Thomas's downfall, and the show took a new era, which was a very stupid decision. But... Anyways, I'm going to be talking about Season 8 and telling you why I don't like it as much as the first seven seasons. So you remember the seven seasons that were good? They were made by Britt Allcroft and David Mitten. They knew what they were doing. They gave these stories effort, logic, and realism. They started to adapt Audrey's stories, and then they made their own stories after Audrey passed away. But their own fan-made stories from Seasons 5-7 through seven were spot on. I thought all of them were amazing. The music is catchy, the songs they wrote, like Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover, Come for the Ride, It's Great to Be an Engine, Accidents Will Happen. The songs were just so catchy and fun to listen to. Even the whistle song in There Once Was an Engine Who Ran Away. Anyways, back to Season 8. So, what may be different about Season 8, you ask? First, I'm going to be talking about what they changed about Thomas and Friends. So, obviously they didn't change anything too major. All the characters are still there. Michael Brandon and Michael Angus were still the narrators. They kept using the same models. They're just different visuals than Season 7. Now, Season 8's visuals are pretty um, okay, but they're not as charming and beautiful as Season 6 or 7. But I still like how they kept using the same models. The episodes were longer than 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Now the, mi now the episodes are like 7 minutes long instead of 4 minutes. Which isn't bad. Like, when I was a kid, I didn't know the episodes were four minutes long. And I didn't know that season eight had seven minute long episodes. So that's interesting. Anyways, um, they did change the music in season eight. However, in season seven, in the US dub of season seven, Robert Hartshorn started composing the music. But in season seven from the UK dub, they used Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell instead. And then season 8 is when they got replaced by Robert Hartshorn in the UK. And I think Robert Hartshorn might be an amazing composer. He did a beautiful job with season 7 in the US dub. However, in seasons 8 through 12, his music has slightly gotten downgraded. Not as much as in season 8, but season 9 is where I draw the line. In seasons 9 through 12, his music is boring and unbearable. Especially when you find out that he uses the exact same melodies throughout the same bloody era of Thomas and Friends. Season 8 started with a different approach of the music and 
But in seasons 9 through 12, the music was just the same and formulaic and unbearable to listen to. It's like they're using the same trumpets over and over again. I just don't like that. And I'm sure you agree with me if you don't like seasons 8 through 12. Anyways, um, the songs are pretty nice. I think A World Around You is pretty nice. The whistle song is catchy, don't get me wrong. But my two favorite songs are the season 8 intro of Thomas and Friends, which is much more catchier than the original one in my opinion. But if you like the original Thomas the Tank Engine theme song, I respect your opinion. But the season 8 theme song is probably my favorite. It's more catchier than the original one. The whistle song is catchy, like I said, and the engine roll call is amazing. It basically takes the same melody as the Season 8 intro, but extends it. And it gives you a perfect introduction to all the characters you know and love. And another thing is that the Steam Team are the main focus of the season. Normally in Tom's Tank Engine, they mainly focus on either main characters or side characters. Like, they focus on side characters like the Narrow Gauge Engines, Oliver, Donald and Douglas, Stephanie, Emily, Fergus, Arthur. Like, all the side characters do get one main focus from the classic series, but they do also focus on the main characters like Thomas, Edward, Percy, James, Henry, Gordon, and Toby. However, um, the one change that they did make, which is probably my favorite... Hold on. Sorry if I had to cut the video, but the one change that I did like the most was adding Emily into the Steam Team and making her one of the main protagonists. Now, if you're wondering, like, what well, the story is behind Emily being one of the main antagonists, is that I mean, main protagonists is that sorry. The reason why they wanted Emily as a main protagonist was to add some gender diversity in the show. That's right, gender diversity. And if you don't know what gender diversity is, it's when they add a certain female or male character to a main cast. And that's what they did for Emily here. Now, originally Duck was supposed to be a member of the Steam Team, but then they decided to replace Duck with Emily just because they wanted a female Steam Engine in the gender cast. So Emily was the very first female steam engine to be introduced in the main canon of Thomas and Friends. Now Thomas and Magic Railroad is not canon, so Lady does not count as a female steam engine, but that really confused me because Lady was a female steam engine when she was first introduced. But then Emily came along and they called her the first female steam engine because the show, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Thomas and Magic Railroad was not canon and... Basically, in Season 6, they didn't, like, acknowledge Thomas and Magic Railroad. You don't see Spire, Dodge Lady, and Diesel 10 return in that regard. So, they had to, like, make Emily the first female steam engine in the show. And basically, when Emily was first introduced, she was actually one of my favorite characters of all time. I had a huge crush on Emily as a kid, and I still do as an adult. And I think it's genius of them to add Emily as a main character, because we get to see her shine more often... Like, Emily is a pretty nice character, but she does have her flaws. She's not like Nia and Rebecca, who are just Mary Sue's. And by the way, Emily is 100 times better than Nia and Rebecca. So, I'm just glad that some people knew what they were doing when they wanted to add a character and increase gender balance. Like, they didn't kick out any um, main characters like Edward and Henry at the time. They weren't replaced with Emily here. Like, Emily just replaced Duck. And, um, to be honest, like, I think it would have been nice if Duck was a member of the Steam team. I know certain fans who love Duck would be upset that he got pushed to the side and replaced with Emily, the female engine. But you gotta give them credit where credit is due for making Emily a great character in Season 7. Her whole character arc from... Thomas not liking her to Emily showing that she can be a great character and Thomas being friends with her. That's genius. That's pure genius. Brett Alcroft and David Mitten knew what they were doing when they created Emily as a character. But, sadly, Emily would take a certain downfall of seasons 8 through 12 and 13 to 16. But we'll talk about that later. Okay, now let's talk about... Um, the certain flaws with season 8. And, um... First, let's talk about, um, the way the episodes are written. So, um, 
the way the episodes are written is that they simply take a formulaic route. It's basically like a um, ongoing narrative where um, basically this is one of the stupidest plot lines I've ever heard of. In season eight, they completely take characters that you know and love, and they destroy these characters. They make these character personalities different compared to the original in order to appeal to the younger kids. This is what happened to shows like Family Guy or Spongebob, where they just flanderize the characters. So I don't know what they were thinking, but... Character assassination is one of the worst things to happen to a cartoon or a TV show. But we'll talk about that in part two.